Hi, I'm Bruce B. Lenoyle, and you're watching a podcast where nostalgia comes alive. It's Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Let's roll it. Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. Have you here with us, thank you for joining. As always, I'm your host, Jake Duffenbaugh, with me today, our co-host Chris Bixby and Matt Bingo. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing terrific. Hi everybody, how are you, Jake? Doing great, Matt, thank you for asking. What do we have for today? Fabulous that you are with us, folks. Our guest today is a puppeteer and voice actor who's worked with the Muppets and the Jim Henson Company since the early 1990s. He was a puppeteer on Crank Yankers as well as Stuff on Mutton Stuff, among others. He was also the puppeteer of Kyle O'Connor on The Puzzle Place. Now, this tape does not have this episode, sadly. Oh, well. As well as Goofy, uh, Goofer and Vinny in the happy time murders most notably he was at the science kid on the show with the same name and more recently he was evan the troll on the nickelodeon series the barbarian and the troll which he was also one of the co-creators of please welcome drew massey drew welcome happy to have you here hello how's it going jake matt and chris good morning yes hello hello you too you too yes happy to have you here happy to have you here so Good to be here Thank you. Very happy. So to kick this off, could you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and what you do? Um, sure. Uh, let's see. I am from California originally. I spent some time back east while my parents went to different colleges. And um, I actually am a, an alumnus of uh, MIT nursery school. Um, hmm. It's really dorky, but <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I went to nursery school at MIT uh where the crayons talk back um no it was um yeah and then i settled in northern california and that is kind of how i got into puppetry um because frank oz uh his family i think is from northern california and his dad worked at uh, children's fairyland in oakland and that is how my friend michael earl got in touch with um puppetry as well i mean i guess he was a fan of it to begin with but he worked with mike osnowitz and then um and then so he got introduced to the puppet crowd back east and it's really through him that i have a fantastic career in puppetry i always knew i wanted to do something in entertainment because i was enthralled with you know all things muppets and star wars and <laughs> whatever growing up uh got all the Cinefix magazines and poured over how everything was done. And so I was a very behind the scenes kind of kid. And uh, so I did, a, I did a lot of puppet making when I was a kid. And part of that was due to Michael because he taught an after school puppet making class when I was in the second grade. So I still have that uh, vampire puppet that uh, I made in the second grade. And it's weird that it was a vampire. I sort of set things off because later I would uh, play Count Blah on the Fox Greg the Bunny show and then um, and then I would also do the puppet version of Angel in the uh, Smile Time episode. Nice. So I have a, I have a nice nice history with vampire puppets. <laughs> <laughs> and I did mm. I did right hand for Jerry Nelson doing the count actually. And I think I right hand nice. for Matt uh, a couple times. Anyway. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Uh, what was your childhood like? And and before you get oh, home, <laughs> take two. Um, so what was your background like before getting into puppetry? Well, uh, before I really got into puppetry, I was studying to do. Um, I really wanted to be a storyboard artist in Hollywood. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. so I went to industrial design school because a lot of my favorite storyboard artists, notably like Joe Johnson. Um, you know, I would get the, the big books of all the behind the scenes, Star Wars um, storyboards and stuff. And all of them had been through industrial design school. So they knew how to draw really cool vehicles and, and just draw well and, and put their ideas on paper. And I figured at the very least, you know, if I got an education in that, 
hopefully I would learn the storyboard. And if not, you know, maybe I could do a graphic novel or something or get into comics. <laughs> Cause I would, you know, I, I really wanted to ma master the sequential arts as it were. So, but industry, yeah. So I went to Cal State Long Beach and, uh, and I, I guess at that time they were running the Jim Henson hour and I got really inspired. So I just started making puppets kind of for the first time since I was a kid. And I had <laughs> just like filled my dorm room with puppet heads, which probably my fellow students thought was weird, but I didn't <laughs> care. Um, I mean, it was college. Everybody was a weirdo in college, right? So anyway. yeah, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> pretty much. And so uh, it was it was because of that that um, that Michael and I, Michael Earl and I got in contact later on because um, he ran into my mom in a supermarket in our hometown. And then uh, he's like, what's Drew doing? She's like, well, I think he just built a bunch of puppets. So he's kind of into that now. And he's like, oh, well, cool. Then have him visit next time he's up. So I did like I brought a bunch of my puppet heads up and he's like, oh, these are these are cool. Um, let's do, let, let, do you want to learn how to puppeteer? I was like, yes, I do. From a guy who's been working with the Muppets for years. Yes, that sounds great. Um, so I went over to his house and I, um, he set up a camera. I think he already had a camera and monitor set up. And that's really how you learn good classic Henson style puppetry is with a camera and a monitor. There's really kind of no other way to do it. Right. Um, and that was my very first lesson uh, in video puppetry. And, uh, and it was super fun. And the way, the way Michael told it, uh, it was like a ridiculous matter of timing and being in the right place at the right time. Because as I was packing my puppet heads in the trunk of my car, Kevin Clash, he did Elmo and uh, Fiery and Labyrinth and all kinds of wonderful great Splinter in the original Ninja Turtles movies. Anyway, so Kevin Clash calls at that exact moment and oh, wow. asks Michael if he wants to do a job in New York for a home video. And he says, so do you have anybody in mind to, you know, assist for you? And he's like, looking at me out the window, he's like, yeah, I know a guy. <laughs> so <laughs> oh that, that was kind of it. Like he, he said, do you want to come out to New York and do this job? You know, it'll, it'll pay enough to cover your airfare. And I'm like, mm, yes. Um, <laughs> So I went out and, and it was like a magical mystery tour of, of puppet awesomeness. Like I remember, um, it was over Halloween. So I, I had made this like fun Audrey two style, uh, chest burster kind of puppet thing where I'd strap my arm into the middle of my, uh, body and then puppeteer this character coming out, um, which is really fun. So I took that and that, that was a good idea. Um, Cause it, you know, got people wondering like, who's this kid? This is kind of neat. Um, so if you ever have the opportunity, show off your skills, that's what I'm saying. Um, but it was amazing cause he took me out there. We um, went to Sesame Street. Uh, Jim Henson was still alive at the time. He was doing Kermit on the street. Uh, so we watched him for a little bit. And then when he was done, Michael <laughs> ushered me over. He's like, Jim, meet my friend Drew. <laughs> I was like, ha -ha, uh -huh. ha -ha, hi. <laughs> I'm, I'm shaking Kermit's head. That's me. I mean, your hand. I mean, yeah, hi. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> um, and that was, that was really cool. And then, and then we had uh, lunch with Richard Hunt, who was oh, also nice. still alive at the time. Yeah. Super nice guy, super funny. Um, and uh, so that was a kind of an amazing job. And the job itself was fantastic. Worked with Kevin, who was lovely, showed me off. He was really patient with, you know, everything I was <laughs> trying to do. And I was just starting out, you know, so I was figuring the monitors out. And I think they could see I had potential. But, you know, I was very green. So I, I really owe a lot to them, too, that they you know, we're just like, you'll be fine. You're going to do great. Just do it. It's great. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it was, it was nice. Sometimes it just takes people believing in you. 
Of course, make an definitely. entire career happen. <laughs> pretty much. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, pretty much. So very early on in your professional career, you puppeteered on the Henson series Dinosaurs. Now we're mm -hmm. we're talking like very technologically advanced, especially for the early 90s. What yeah. was it like working on that? That was to this day one of the coolest uh experiences because you would walk on set and, and you were literally immersed in that world because the stage it was at cbs radford and it was uh it was on stage 10 one of their bigger stages and it was like always set up with the the sinclair family house and like jungles and volcanoes and it was always smoked up like there was stage smoke ever so you walk in and it just feels like you know prehistory <laughs> and then people in giant dinosaur suits go walking around it was so great because it was i think one of the last things that was kind of all in camera like everything you saw on that show was real and it was happening in front of you and the 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 level of technical expertise and and just and, and patience and and know how to make it to pull it all off was just mind blowing. Even back then, like I don't I don't know what the Disney execs. I hope they were thrilled when they saw the footage and it was being shot on film, so it was being shot like a like a feature. Um, they 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 were not screwing around on that show. It was phenomenal. And yeah, it was, uh, so having said that, like it was so impressive and so much fun to be on the set. They invited me on the set because I had been, really some of my formative training, honestly, was for that show. They had had an audition where it was, uh, oh, was it a month long? It felt like a month, it was probably only two weeks, but they they brought us in and, they they basically ran us through our paces. For me, they taught me like everything. It was Kevin Clash, it was David Greenaway, it was Brian Henson. Uh, David Greenaway was there to teach the, they had the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle heads. So they were teaching the the um, the digital performance systems. Cause, so they had their Waldo out there that moved. It was like, it was for dinosaurs, but it was before they had done dinosaurs. So it was, you know, comparatively like pretty rudimentary but it was still amazing to get to put my hand in that and control a physical mechanical puppet. Um, but so anyway, they, they brought us in there, they trained us, they actually paid us for our time. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I, is, what, what world is this? How, what? Um, it was insane. So at the end of that, they're like, they're like, we love what you did. You're still very green. I'm like, I know, but I love this. And I love you guys and I want to do this for the rest of my life. And they're like, awesome. Come to set any time you want and learn as much as you can. I was there <laughs> like every day, like every second I could be there. I was there. People thought I worked on the show. Like to this day, they're like, wait, you only actually like worked two days. I was like, yeah, yeah. I only puppeteered two days, but <clears throat> the rest of the time I was watching, I was learning because I was in, I, you know, there was industrial design and then I was also in, in film school. So I was taking film classes because I wanted to learn how to do film as well. Well, what better way to learn the craft than hang out with, you know, professional directors on this fantastic multi-millions dollar <laughs> TV show. So anyway, all my answers are very long-winded, but that's... That, that, that was my experience. And then a couple times I got roped in to scenes doing creatures, background creatures, fridge monsters, and uh, I couldn't have been happier. <laughs> nice, nice. So you also worked on the PBS series, The Puzzle Place, performing the character Kyle. What was performing that character like? Yeah, that was really fun. I started out uh, on that show as an assist. So I did arms and hands for tons of other characters um i did i did a scene that i'm really proud of uh it was with noel mcneil um with his character and he was singing a song and there 
there during the song he was he had to look into the camera with a mirror i was in charge of the mirror then he put the mirror down because it was a separate prop if i'm remembering it correctly and then he went and he picked up a crayon and do it a little little thing and then put the crayon back down i think i'm remembering this right anyway i was like i was like really young and real cocky i was like guys this is gonna be fine i nailed the mirror part and then i was like i was like if i squish the armature in the puppet's hand just so i think there's enough tension that i can just like slide it onto the crayon pick it up and i it just it it worked i don't know why it shouldn't have but <laughs> <laughs> my puppet guardian angels were looking out for me that day but that that was really fun so anyway i started out as an assist and um and that was a job that uh because kevin clash did the design for the, the characters on that he right. got me into that so he was a good good dude to know um and yeah and playing kyle was was really an honor it was is pretty cool because they did not have you know many i mean it was a it was a pretty diverse show but you know but having that level of diversity represented was pretty awesome and it was uh yeah it was cool they had a whole had a whole rig just to make it look like he was in his wheelchair you know the wheelchair obviously has to be suspended six feet up in the air um so that was that was a little tough but yeah made it work <laughs> wonderful so uh throughout your career you had a pleasure of working with the muppets for a number of projects how do you begin working for them well that all came uh initially through my association with dinosaurs and really that that big training workshop because i had met a bunch of you know i met brian henson so at that time um the Henson family was still uh, still owned the Muppets, so um, yeah. So I went out for let's see what was I doing? I was doing Cousin Skeeter at the time. Then between seasons of that, I went out and did um, Muppets from Space. Ah, uh, yes. And that was that was my love first Muppets, love Muppets from Space. It's so great. <laughs> it's yeah. re- it was it was so much fun to make. It was it was really cool. Um, yeah, there are a couple of shots in there that I don't, I don't know if they're, if they're really appreciated with the the level of, um, of, of technical wizardry that it took to to make them happen. Like there's one during the brick house sequence. There's one thing where uh, one shot where where Kermit comes down a staircase, and that rig was amazing they literally built uh like i don't know if anybody else has talked about this but they literally built um like roller coaster rails for this little slidey cart that steve whitmire sat on at the top of the stairs right and so there was a banister that was solid so the camera saw the staircase so you saw the stairs and you saw kermit come uh like on top, there's nothing underneath. So it's it's Steve and Kermit, and he's on this little slidey thing. And you saw the stairs, and then the camera kind of uh, dollies to the left so that the banister blocks the stairs. But you've already seen them, right? Well, at that point, stagehands <clears throat> pull this giant lever to retract all of the stair treads to reveal the track for the roller coaster thing that Steve then was lowered down on. So it looks like Kermit's just walking down the stairs. It's so, so cool. There was, there, was, there was a bunch of stuff like that that was really, really fun. And I realized um, the, the late, great Ray Liotta was a comedic genius. That guy was so funny. He had us in stitches. I, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like it. Very funny, <laughs> man. Yeah, so uh, one of your earlier projects with the Muppets was on uh, Muppet Classic Theater. What, what was mm. that like? Yeah, that was great. Um, <laughs> I think that was the one. I think that was the one where uh, Frank destroyed a monitor. I think that was. Oh that was boy, the, that was a great. What was funny? What was funny was Frank. The whole day had been like um, 
or nobody nobody put anything on this monitor it's very expensive don't mm -hmm. mess with it <laughs> <laughs> right so so we're like okay hey right mm -hmm. okay don't okay well later in the day at some point somebody had set something on it and uh and it's built and the liquid went in and it was an old crt monitor and it just went smoke and it just was that classic like <laughs> modern fail and frank's like who who did who did who i told who <laughs> <laughs> and then some really like shy p was like <clears throat> i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> I saw you set that copy down there earlier today. What? Oh, that was me? I'm so <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't believe I did that. I... <laughs> anyway, that is my most <laughs> vivid memory of the Classics Theater. Uh, that and doing, I think that was the same one where we did um, the three Elvises. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. With uh and now oh my gosh, that was so much fun. That was with Bill and the and I, I was assisting Bill and my gosh, we were we were just hamming it up. It was it was fun. Bill's always fun to work with. Oh yeah. Oh, I love, love Bill. Bill. He's the best. I love yeah. Bill. He's wonderful. Yeah. Awesome. Funny, funny man. Yes. Yes indeed. Yes indeed. So what was it like working on Muppets tonight? that was amazing oh my gosh uh again like that was when jerry was still around and frank um i right-handed for frank doing a fozzy number where it, he just he was running around everywhere and you had to keep up with frank like you, you know just if you didn't keep up you're you're out so i'm just i'm running around and the problem was at that point i don't know whose choice this was I guess to save money, they didn't have wireless microphones. There was a veritable spaghetti plate of multicolored wires on the floor at all times. So treacherous, especially when you're trying to look at a monitor and some people are on like platform shoes because they're, they're too short. I mean, ah, it's a miracle the medics weren't there like every second but but so i you know one of my very vivid memories of muppets tonight was right handing for frank doing fozzy and tr and praying i didn't trip because there were th it was just full of minefields it was just nuts and he he went fast like frank you know when fozzy runs through the frame he runs through the front like there's it's not slow <laughs> 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 but it was but it was amazing i mean there was so, so much like star talent so it was really cool like watching um like pierce brosnan rehearse his fire eating act and almost lighting his face on fire and he was still james bond at the time i was like oh my god this <laughs> pierce brosnan all this set james bond's face on fire that's crazy um he was a bit of a daredevil but super nice guy yeah everybody was really really cool um yeah, that was fun. And then so many fun characters came out of that. You know, I'd love to see Batman. I'd love to see more Johnny and Sal. And uh, oh yes, I mean, I, I loved all of I loved all the Bill and Brian's uh, pairings. You know, see more and Pepe, and it was, it was just fun stuff. Yeah, and I mean, Pepe came out of that show. Yeah, so. and that was, was such you know this iconic character. Yep. He's been like the lead in a lot of things. Like there was Muppets Haunted Mansion fairly yes. recently, which Pepe was a huge part of. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, that was that was that was really fun. And then there were there were fun little things that happened, like um, uh, well, you know, watching some of the stars rehearse was was really really fun. Like um. Oh, uh, who am I thinking? Oh, well, Prince. I mean, Prince came on oh, and yes. and just like watching him do his numbers before actually going on the like he would just rehearse and we were just all like, wow, this is, it's a private concert. That's so cool. Um, yeah, I mean, there were just so many great opportunities during that show. Uh, 
to watch to learn and and um, yeah, it was, it was pretty magical. I wish somebody was. Is anybody airing that show? Where is it? I don't think I so. I think it. you. Can, I think all the episodes might be on YouTube or something. I think but I don't, so. Yeah. I don't think yeah. it's aired anywhere in years. No, no. Hmm. Probably will soon. So. Yeah. yeah like maybe too. who knows? Maybe one day it'll go on Disney Plus or something. Hopefully. We'll see. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They keep they keep taking stuff off. R.I.P. Earthnet. Anyway. Yeah. Um, That's so... right. Yeah, I did yes. see that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So so um going back a bit to working on uh, Muppet Films because we already talked about uh, Muppets from Space. What was it like working on It's a Very Merry Muppet Christmas Movie? Oh, that was great. Um, that was fun because it was directed by Kirk Thatcher, and um, he's always fun to work with. Well, uh, yeah, and then he was a writer on Muppets from Space, so that's where we first, like, really started palling around, and then, so by the time the Christmas movie ran, uh, came around, we were pretty tight, so, so we had a lot of, a lot of fun shenanigans in, uh, Vancouver, and that was, yeah, that was my first time shooting in Vancouver, and I love that city, so much fun, the crews are amazing, um, and, yeah, it was, uh, let's see, what was, what was notable about that shoot? I mean, Joan Cusack was phenomenal. Uh, she was really fun to work with. And, well, I don't know, it was just a good, just a good time. I don't know that I remember anything super specific, but <laughs> it's fun to make. Absolutely, very, very fun movie. Yes, it was. So you also puppeteered on the web series Statler Waldorf from the Balcony as Statler, Animal Pepe, and various others. What was that like? Well, that was really interesting because that was when the when the whole franchise was just starting to. I mean, I think they had they been sold to Disney at that point. I think so. I think, I think so. Then. They might have. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like I was a year actually. After, I think. I was actually a little irritated that they ran my Pepe stuff because that was supposed to have been dubbed over by Bill. So mm. that was that was a little frustrating, but you know, the rest of it. Um yeah, the Statler was 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 doing Statler was really fun. I liked I liked that. And uh, the really the idea with that was really wanted to create more new Muppet characters. Because, you know, I'm, I'm I, doing the old characters, like, they have people to do those. So I'm really more interested in, in doing, doing new characters. So, but, you know, obviously they wanted the other ones, and Debbie McClellan was in charge of that. So she was calling the shots and figuring out what, um, yeah, where to put us. But, yeah, they actually, they actually wanted me to do Kermit for that. And I was like, nah, nah, you already have a guy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. Um, but, yeah. So, uh, you briefly got to work on Sesame Street first, the special, Amapalooza. Can you talk a bit about getting to work on that? <laughs> I remember very little of that. That was, that was a while ago. I think I remember more about about my like individual times assisting for Kevin, like when he was out here doing, you know, appearances at the Grove, um, television appearances here and there. Um, yeah, because a lot of that, like Elmo Palooza, it was, it was very, like the production was very divided. So I wasn't there for the main part of it. So whatever I did on Elmo Palooza, it was like insert bits. Mm -hmm. So, Because I know there are a lot of songs, uh, done in well a few songs done in la like there was one with the count there was a uh, one with yes. like en vogue or whatever yes i do remember that yeah the en vogue one i did take part in yeah so i think that's probably where i first assisted i don't know if i first assisted jerry with the count but um that was definitely one of the more memorable ones yeah <laughs> Definitely. And um, so kind of moving on a bit from uh, Sesame and the Muppets, you've also done a lot of work with uh, Jim Henson's Creature Shop. Can you kind of mm -hmm. talk about your work with them? Yeah, well, it all, again, stemmed from that Dinosaurs uh, 
uh, training workshop. And so I, I, I knew people at the shop from that point on. And so I auditioned to do um, the Flintstones movie. That okay. was my first big mm. job with the Creature Shop for, um, for Henson um, for films. So that was, that was really fun. I, uh, I spent a summer with my hand up a, a bird moving them around and and then I had this sort of like steady cam rig to, to fly him around and so that was that was really fun and I was removed from a lot of shots I think people at ILM got sick of stopping <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so then so then after that I just kind of kept with it and I always loved the the digital performance system which um, which I'm now training to uh, i'm training other puppeteers to learn that so oh, nice. I, nice yeah because we you know we need we need awesome. more people to to do it and we got a really nice diverse um swath of great puppeteers who can improvise do great voices and who are really good at manipulation so it's um yeah it's good i'm trying to deepen the bench there and uh and it's going well people nice. are really taking to it so um but yeah so let's see i went i uh, did that and then i did uh dr doolittle also for the creature shop <laughs> i uh they re they rented their tiger to wes anderson for the darjeeling um limited uh movie so i spent five days in india with a tiger puppet on a train uh going through rajasthan which was absolutely phenomenal um <laughs> Never, I've never gotten a uh, a bigger, quicker set of uh, vaccination shots. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Had to get like malaria shots and all this. Um, uh. But yeah, that was that was amazing. If you ever get a chance to go to India, do it. It's amazing. Um, and then yeah, and then so I'm still you know working for him today, doing a lot of HTTPS stuff and. Um, yeah, I'm I'm on call basically whenever they need me. Very cool, very cool. So you also worked on the Nickelodeon series Cousin Skeeter doing the puppetry for the title character. Yes. Not not the voice people, that was somebody else. Just wanted that, to state yes. that. That was Bill Bellamy. I know, it's so funny because I talk about that all the time. I'm like, that was a different era. But I'll <laughs> I tell guess. you, though the thing the thing is though, Kevin Clash uh gave me that job he literally he said do this there's i don't have anybody else do it i'm like okay <laughs> is anybody gonna okay i mean it you back me up right like if anybody has an issue like you like yeah so um but he was great and he designed the puppet and it was through through his pump co puppet company and so that was really cool because it was through Tolan Robbins uh, Productions, so I got to know Brian Robbins and Mike Tolan, and um, and that was a fantastic. Like, talk about a film school. I mean, they they had some fantastic directors who a lot of them came out of uh, Roger Corman films, actually. So they knew how to shoot quick and and really get get what you wanted um, in the the shortest time. Um, but some, we have some fantastic directors there. Um, Allison Liddy, um, Sean Levy, who went on to direct all the Night at the Museum movies and uh, Stranger Things, right? He was nice. on Cousin Skeeter back in the day. Uh, nice. Yeah, Lev Spyro. Um, yeah, lots of, lots of fantastic directors. So that was really, really cool because it was a single camera sitcom and so i i really got a lot of director knowledge from that because i'd ask them you know and i'd harass the dp it's like so why why this lens why what are you, what are you doing here and it's great because you know if you're on a production like that you know and it's you have the time um people will answer your questions so it's a really really good way to learn on the job and uh and if you you know, sit and observe. And the great thing, one of the many great things about puppetry is that as an actor, you're always seeing the frame. So 
I think that's why a lot of puppeteers go into directing because they are used to seeing exactly how the shots are set up. They know exactly what's being shot, where the camera's moving, why. And then if they, you know, if you study it after the fact, you'll, you'll see how it's all cut together. And it's really informative, but, but it's, it's cool because as a puppeteer, you're always, you always know what's going in the camera. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, uh, you also puppeteered Count Bala and various others on the sitcom, Greg the Bunny. What was that like? Mm -hmm. That was so much fun. Uh, Very funny show. Yeah, it was great. It was great. I'm, I'm bummed it didn't go another season at least. Um, but gosh, yeah. Talk about star power. Um, I always wanted to run into Marilyn Henner again, cause I hear she has a, a, an eidetic memory. So I'm wondering if she'll, she'll, I'm sure she will. She'll be like, Drew, how's it going? I don't know. <laughs> It'd just be really fun. Cause she played, uh, Count Blas ex wife, I guess, or something. No Warrens. Anyway, lots of weird relationship things going on in that show. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, super fun. Seth Green, Sarah Silverman, like uh, uh, Gene Levy. Like, why? How? How do you top that? It's phenomenal. Nice. Um, yeah, and the and the the only thing I wish they had done is get better puppet builders. I think they. I don't know what they were doing there because some of those puppets were very uncomfortable and not mm. needle, but. Mm, you know, it is what it is. You, yeah. you spend you spend your money on the, you know, the, the expensive people and <laughs> yeah, sometimes sometimes thing, but um, but to this day, like you know, Dan Milano and I talk a bunch because he's he's just the greatest guy and such a such a wonderful person and a good friend and a fantastic guy. He's such a good improviser. One of my favorite times in all of puppetry is watching Dan Milano as War and the Ape uh, riff and just ad lib with Dr. Drew Pinsky in a, in a real rehab center about all of Warren's issues. It was hilarious. I mean, clearly Dan had thought out this character to such a degree that, uh, that an actual licensed therapist could give him real advice. It was, it was pretty phenomenal. Definitely love Greg the Bunny. Yeah. Yes, uh, fantastic show. Another fantastic show you worked on. Uh, various puppets on the Comedy Central series Crank Yankers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fun show. Fun show. What? Very what's fun it show. like working on that? Super fun. Um, behind the scenes is really odd. Uh, compared to most shows, because it's done to a pre-recorded track, so a lot of times you'll be rehearsing and, and actually even shooting your scene, right? But <laughs> because it's to a pre-recorded track, people are tearing down and building sets over here. So it's just like, you're doing your thing and you're like, guys, I'm working. <laughs> like, I, hey, we got to shoot. Uh, we we got to tear this down and build it because you're shooting on it in like 20 minutes. So anyway, it was nuts. But um, and and for me personally, like not the most satisfying experience, just because like puppeteers, we love doing our own voices. Like dubbing later is fine. Uh, you know, if we get to lay down a, a performance to have a dub later, that's fine. At least you have the the freedom to improvise and play around. With a lot of stuff this you were really locked into the track and it was super super tough uh especially the first several seasons because you would just have to memorize the call there was no other way to do it and you had to memorize the length of every pause and every now in later seasons what was great the total innovation that actually made it fun um last two seasons they had beeps i didn't work on the last season but the season, I hope they still did beeps. But anyway, they had cue beeps in front of when you were going to talk, which made it infinitely more simple to actually nail your lip sync. <laughs> 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 so, 
So, and then, you know, and then for me, like a lot of it was, was freed up. I mean, you still had to memorize the basic call, but a lot of it was freed up to actually concentrate on the performance instead of like, when, when, when's it coming up? So there's a lot of, a lot of panic on that show. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but going... super fun. I got to say though, just shout out to John Kimmel. He, he, I do uh, love that guy. He just made that show fun to be on. <laughs> and, uh, and Jen Gore producer. She's amazing. Actually, you know what? It was filled with fantastic people. We used, um, we used, uh, uh, Gary Gordon and, um, and Charles Pappert for, uh, for design and, and DP respectively on our, nice. um, sizzle pilot for Barbarian and the Trolls. So yeah. And, and Jen Gore. Um, yeah, there, it's just full of great, great people. So going back a bit to, uh, using the, uh, Henson digital performance system, uh, you also performed uh, Sid on Sid, the science kid. Mm -hmm. Um, what was it like, uh, working on that show and kind of, you know, really getting to work with uh, digital puppetry on a project like that? Yeah, that was pretty groundbreaking for its time. They were, uh, I remember, <laughs> you know, it was this, this little, I guess just PBS kids preschool show, but the, te like, again, the technical Henson's always really pushing the envelope technically. So it's, uh, so they wanted to make it like a real time three camera um and you you can the, the the system now is so robust like they have their camera rigs and you can do a three camera sitcom uh actually in camera now because unreal 5 is just is so good um and so back then like you know we were shooting and we would do I mean, we'd do pages a day. It was it was pretty phenomenal how much content we would we would push out. Back then, it took more post rendering than it does now. So now it's even quicker. Um, but back then, it was it was funny because you know I'd be walking out the door, going home, and and people would be just wheeling in these giant dollies full of like servers. And they're like more computing power <laughs> it's like because they they rendered it all there on site they built a a server farm or a render farm and so it was it was very it was very technically demanding um but super fun yeah. to shoot like the one of the great things about digital puppetry is like you get everybody on set and you block out your scene and it's like a a regular acting gig where you know, you really go through the beats of the script and you find those little moments and you get fun little improv bits, which, um, you know, you can, I don't know that, that many animated shows get that because it's very spontaneous. So, and you get little things, you know, if somebody trips, well, you keep it in, it's natural. <laughs> yes, yes, it's just a science but, such a, yes, it's such a wonderful, wonderful show. There's so many great episodes. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Gosh. I, 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 it's funny because I, I, um, my dad's a retired nuclear physicist. And so I, I really, you know, I grew up in a science family. So I, hmm. um, oh, after wow. the, wow. after the fact, yeah, I, I really, I'm like really proud of the show. Cause I, I feel like it did, it really did what it set out to do, oh, yeah. which is teach science hmm. readiness and, and oh, yeah. yeah. Went on for and, quite a uh, while too. Yeah. 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 Did we went for a like, while until like, like a couple five years, ago? years or something. Yeah, I mean, I think they just kept kept running because we did a lot of episodes for that. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh yeah. Like over a hundred or, or, or no, no, no. Probably yeah, around there. Probably around there. Like it was. It was. It was nine. I think it was nine around ninety something, something like that. But yeah. 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 It was. Yeah. It was really really fun and uh, love working with all like the suit performers were fantastic. The puppeteer mm -hmm. cast yeah. was fantastic. Like it was. Yeah. A good time. Yeah, I mean, like here's Alice Deneen, I, Donna Kimball, a lot of wonderful uh, people. Victor Yared. Yeah, Victor, yes. Yeah, and um yeah, Julian Busher and uh um and the super performers, Misty Roses and uh um John Cameron and Juan Williams and who else? Who am I forgetting? <laughs> So many, so many. Sorry, people. sorry. I know I keep saying like, <laughs> oh, it's, 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 it was great. It was so much fun, but it really like, uh, you know, uh, uh, my 
girlfriend Nicolette and I are always saying like we're in the greatest community of performers like they're just such really nice people and we, we always feel very very fortunate yes oh yes it was only oh it was actually actually only like 67 episodes really yeah I thought it was more than that really I think that was one season <laughs> I know you guys also Only did uh, seasons, Sid the Science Kid like. the Mo- the Science Kid the movie. Yeah. Which was a lot of fun. That was that was yeah, that was fun. It was cool to hear um Christopher Lloyd's voice on it too, after the fact. Uh yeah. Doc Brown. I was like, What? Yes. You're giving Doc Brown <laughs> be the professor. That's so cool. Yeah. Um and you actually also did the voiceover for the funding too. For oh I I did yeah for yes right yeah uh-huh. yeah uh yeah the little PBS like yeah yeah please yeah. donate this is sponsored by Lockheed or whatever yeah <laughs> yeah like, like yeah five California yeah five California, yeah. Yeah. Five yeah. California. So, yeah. definitely so a lot of uh, Sid the Science Kid fans are probably wondering is it fine if we can hear a little bit of uh, Sid. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, sure. Is this thing on? Hello. Keep asking questions, but don't stop till you get good answers. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I, That's I have to. I'm. I'm. I'm like amending his his catchphrase because I'm like, don't just ask questions. We've we've had too much of that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Don't just cast doubt on everything because that doesn't do any good. No. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <clears throat> Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, there are lots of great episodes. Sticker chart, slide to the Oh yeah, side. sticker chart. That was the very first one. Oh, sticker chart, yeah. Yeah, yeah. uh-huh. The, um, Sid's backyard camp out, which is so funny. We literally mentioned that when Vic, when talking to Victor, yeah, Victor, he was, he was great. And he literally mentioned, he was thinking that, that same exact episode, too. Yeah. And, uh, Out of all of them, that particular <laughs> one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That chair is feeling me. There we go. <laughs> um, the no school sing along. I was just gonna bring that one up. Yes. Yeah, it's a good one. That was a fun one to watch. I love that one. I, I fun enough. I I did watch it before, for doing this, and it was such a fun episode to watch it again. It was it yeah, was great. Very good. <clears throat> it's a great show. You need to bring that back. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. <clears throat> Especially so, now with with uh, c- current technology. Can you imagine? Wow. Oh yeah. Right. Yes. <clears throat> Exactly. So on on stage, you perform in the puppet improv troupe Puppet Up, uncensored. Yes. Uh, what was that like? Oh boy, we started that back in 2006, I think, it was our first show, and it was a friends and family show on the Henson lot. And boy, we were rough. Uh, but it was oh man, it's so much fun. We we got invited to the Aspen Comedy Festival, and then a couple festivals in Australia. And then Edinburgh, at the Fringe Festival. So it was great. We um we sort of traveled the world with that. And uh, I love I love doing the show so much. Um, I uh, yeah I I always try to come up with bits and new song improvs, and everybody just kind of collaborates and adds to it. And it's um yeah it's neat. I I wish. At some point, at some point, I would love for it. It's a great live experience. I would love for it to be televised somehow. I don't oh, know. You, yeah. I don't know how you do that quite, but um, yeah, if you could do a, you know, whose puppet is it anyway, kind of thing, would be great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds like a fun idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you also got to puppeteer on a few uh, Sid and Marty Croft projects, including. Uh, Mutton stuff and uh, the uh, revival of Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, and of course, we very sadly recently lost Marty Croft. Um, yes. What what was it like getting to work with uh, with them on those uh, projects? So much fun, an absolute dream come true. There was a certain point at which you know I was doing Henson projects and Croft projects, and I was like, oh man, if my ten year old self could see me now, <laughs> he would <laughs> just freak the heck out um yeah marty was lovely he was such a great guy and and he um he was always very very nice to me and he really you know when he when he gets people he likes he he kind of adopts them you know he's like your family 
just come back, whatever you got, we'll take a lunch and shoot the crap and bad ideas around. And, and then, you know, he'd call me for advice on different things here and there. And so I was, uh, I was really, a, uh, it was really sad that we lost him because yeah. I, I had hoped he would be around for much, much as we all did much, much yeah. longer, but, um, but yeah, working for him was fantastic. I love doing mutton stuff. Uh, again, mutton stuff, such a great show, such a great love show. It. Again, it's like a family. Um, and it was, it was really great because at Marty's funeral, it was a bit of a reunion. There were a lot of mutton stuff people there and it, which was awesome. Um, and I gotta say, like to this day, stuff is one of my favorite characters I've ever played because I think oh, he's stop. the I think, he, <laughs> I think character. he's the dumbest. Yeah, and <laughs> I just I love I just love him so much. Like I could do anything and just you know mishear people, and it was really it was re actually really fun to do on like on set. God bless her. Megan Godfrey deserves a huge shout out. Um, she was in stuff suit and uh uh she's a stunt woman and just i i don't know how she did half the things she did in that costume it's like literally wearing a sofa like it's huge like there's no other way to to build it lighter because it, he's covered with fur and fur is heavy and so yeah. you know she's literally like jumping up and i swear like at a certain point you know in video games when characters like jump up in their or cartoons they jump up in their their feet do this like she used to do that on the regular and i'm like what how are you doing that um, <laughs> she had like boundless energy and she was so she was she is such a gifted um physical comedian there i just she was so good in that suit so she she really deserves credit for uh for a lot of stuff's personality yes. and uh and and between the two of us like had great um i really felt like i had great chemistry and i felt like the the character it, itself was just awesome and a, and a fantastic foil for calvin <laughs> yes. Yes. yes yes calvin did such a great calvin, job we, yeah calvin was wonderful on that show yeah yes, he really was he really did, he did yeah such a good, especially like guys for his first acting job like come on he was a kid he was, yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, he did really well on that. You know, I mean, he was. Fact, a I'm pretty sure him and I might be around stuff. the same age or something. Yeah, that I means I am too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, previously before he did Monster, before he even thought about doing a show like Monster, he was a part of some of his dad's shows too yeah so he right. wasn't really like much like into acting he was kind of like kind of like a little cameo but that was yeah. like that yeah mon stuff's kind of like his first ever like acting gig having like done. major role yeah, yeah. exactly but, but, but just crazy he did yeah he did that good but, but, but with not any acting right. at all he just you know yeah and the, even like the fact that that show happened Huge at all I, i'm fond of saying like you know they always tell you in hollywood like all right uh, don't uh, have kids don't have animals and don't have puppets. That's just a recipe for disaster. Like this had all three, every show, I, and it went off, you know, without a hitch every day, which is a real testament. Like hire those producers to do everything because wow. Um, yeah, Croft got it done. Uh, yes. Cool. Doesn't look like we're moving out to Hollywood there, Jake, huh? <laughs> Nope. Mm -mm. That's fine. East Coast is just fine with us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Um. So uh, is it fine if we can hear a little bit of stuff? Oh sure. Hey Calvin. Guess what? <laughs> uh, never mind. I forgot what I was gonna say. Um. Ooh, bone. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, wonderful. He's my favorite. Yes. That's great How stuff. He's a great character. Um, so now uh, moving on to more of your recent work, what was it like getting to perform with the Muppets at the High Whipple and the O2? The, oh my gosh. Well, I'll tell you something. Like You have never been love-bombed by an audience. Uh, <laughs> if, uh, if, uh, like being on stage, just the curtains opened and like, wow! 
<laughs> like it was <laughs> nuts, nuts, but so much fun, so much fun. Yeah, it was great. Um, you know, I was assisting all the main guys, and I was doing. Um, I don't know if you were there, but Kermit did a little tap dance number, and uh, I was doing his uh, little tappy feet, and Alice was doing his his little arms and yeah for the happy feet song yeah yeah uh, yeah we set up a whole rig in my living room at the time with bungees and like it was it was fun we rehearsed the heck out of that um yeah that was a great show i thought it was really well written i thought it was uh super well produced i wish they could have you know kept doing it because it was great but i'm sure it was yeah prohibitively expensive to put on but probably super yeah. good for i'm um, sure yeah, super super good for PR. Mm-hmm. Anything that gets them up, it's out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yes, there are lots of there are lots of videos of those shows on YouTube, oh, yeah. and yeah. every time we watch shows, it's just like, oh my gosh, yeah, it's just so wonderful. Especially the Rainbow Connection uh, performance. Mm-hmm. Every yeah. single show, all they kind of could, could tell you in the West of Puppeteers, who's <laughs> trying to. So hard not to get emotion when all of you go up together. It's yeah. So it's so incredible. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We all need to be backstage. Yeah. Pull it together. <laughs> yeah. Pull it together. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's too beautiful. Yeah. Exactly. It's tough. It's... Uh, so your most recent project with them was on the Disney Plus series, the Emmy Award winning Muppets Mayhem. Yes. Yes. So sad it got canceled. Uh, I know. Uh, uh, just it's like it, second t- season two, baby. Yeah, um, season two, uh, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I know, and they set it up perfectly for another season, and still, like, what? Right. It was a perfect setup. Come on. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Goldberg. What more do you need? Such, I don't know. Such such the idea. Like it, yeah. I. I, I we were we were watching it um with some friends of ours and we even said like this is a perfect setup for a second season but now it'll never happen yeah. unfortunately but it really was a perfect setup um if you haven't seen muppets oh, may have to go sure. watch it what was it, what was working on that like um well for me i wasn't on most of it uh i did four of the six band members in the opening credits so that was my uh-huh. big addition to like I did Floyd and Janice and Animal and Zoot I think in the opening credits, um, and then and then Nicolette Santino was assisting me on that and then uh, who else was on that day? I don't know. Anyway, um, was Misha there? Misha might have been there. Let's assume he was. Um, <laughs> anyway, so. It's, uh, yeah, so my experience on, like, on set is very limited. Um, I did a day of reshoots as well at the end. So, but aside from that, I'm assuming it was fun. It looked like it was fun. From our observance, it looked like it was fun. <laughs> we'll it was. Just go oh, yeah. We'll, yeah. Just, we'll just go with that. It really was. For sure. Yes, certainly a wonderful show. Um, and the album was wonderful, too. Um, oh, yeah. Muppets uh-huh. Mayhem album. Uh, really, it's yeah, such I a, mean, getting, such a wonderful like, show. Yeah, I mean, getting Ringo Starr to play the drums on a song, like... Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, they got so many amazing cameos on that. I know. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah Weird Al Yankovic. Yes. Yes, I was so happy to... I Yeah, met... Weird Al at the at the premiere party, and that was that's great. I, I was uh, like, I was like, I was like, Bill, could you, could, Nikki and I want to meet Weird Al. Could you play Wingman? Could you uh, just like introduce us? I was like, sure. <laughs> I'll go, I'll go, I'll go start a conversation, and then you just kind of like wander. Up. <laughs> he said he's so great. Ah, uh, Bill. Uh, hey, uh, thanks, Bill. Love Bill. Bill yeah. <clears throat> yes, love Bill. So. Moving back a little bit, recently, a couple years back, you co-created the Nickelodeon series The Barbarian and the Troll, puppeteering yes. one of the lead characters, Evan. Again, very sad that only got one season. I I will say I, I watched that show every week when it was on. Like a new episode. Oh, I, thank you. It's one of the few shows over the last decade that's ha- that that's happened to me. But yeah. that, that's how amazing of a show it was. It, it really was such an amazing show. Thank you. Um, could you uh, kind of talk about the creation process of what that show was like? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, Mike Mitchell, who I co-created it with, um, I just saw him last week. Um, he's doing Kung Fu Panda 4, so go see it opening weekend. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Oh, nice. hey, plug nice. plug for Mike's new movie. Nice. Um, yeah, so he and I met, oh man, early 90s on a show that he had created with a guy named Chris Cole for ABC called Chunks of Life. And it was this hilarious three slacker dudes in an apartment 90s uh grunge era sitcom all with puppets and um he had come from cal arts and was very he, like he's very in the animation realm but love love loves puppets and so we we've kind of like worked together on and off for years and years he directed the pilot for greg the bunny um and and then I don't know, we we kept in contact and then at one point we were just like, let's make a show. Let's have lunch. I think he said, come to lunch. I have a couple ideas. Let's let's do a thing. And I'm like, great, awesome. So he had two ideas and one was about a female uh, warrior. And I was like, awesome. It needs a troll who's bad at trolling. <laughs> he's like, he's like, cool. And then that's pretty much that was pretty much it. And then so <clears throat> I think he wrote a bunch of script and forwarded it to me and I wrote a bunch and we just sort of get ping ponging it back and forth and we cobbled together this really way way too long pilot episode. But but it was it was funny and good and we loved it and we we're like we gotta go pitch this and so he did a bunch of character designs and i did some character designs and uh we went out with it and uh and pitched it and we got some some hits like right off and we went with nickelodeon because they said like number one they were really quick to to bite and they're like yes we want to do this and we'll do it ourselves there's no we're not going to sell it to anybody else we're going to produce it put it on our own network and so that that was a big factor for us in uh, in choosing Nickelodeon because even though the show is kind of written, do you remember is before your time? There was a time when certain cartoons would run on Nickelodeon and then they would run on MTV, and they got a whole different audience on MTV. Um, right, and we were yeah. kind of hoping that would happen, like the Ren and Stimpy route right like yeah. if Ren and Stimpy had mm -hmm. just run on Nickelodeon nobody would you know whatever but the college kids saw it and it blew up <clears throat> now if that had happened to Barbarian and the Troll like that would have been cool they had run it like you know I mean now MTV is not it's a shell of its former self but uh if that that had happened uh the show might have gotten more traction I don't know because we wrote it really like like old school Sesame Street style where like this is for kids ish we really want the parents to dig it right so yeah we kind of, we kind of wrote it for us and we kind of wrote it for the college kids <laughs> <laughs> who might be watching I don't know why they would but anyway um so that's that was kind of our focus and so much fun to do so much hard work um by the way it's because the you know i mentioned that i love vancouver when i went to do the very merry up at christmas um i recommended vancouver when they said like we have to go we shot our sizzle here in los angeles and then nickelodeon was adamant they're like we cannot shoot here it is too expensive the show will never get made so we're going to atlanta and at that point, it was 2020. And I'm like, have you seen Atlanta's COVID rates? Hmm. Have you considered Vancouver? <laughs> 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 They're like, uh, uh, but we will. So, so, uh, so we pushed hard for Vancouver. And uh, that's where we shot, which was awesome. Because they have amazing outdoor uh, areas to shoot in. Now, we wanted to shoot more in the outdoors. Turns out that's insanely expensive because um, you got to truck your entire crew out there 
and the, all the support for the crew, which means porta potties and catering and craft service and all the stuff. Humans need a lot. Uh, so you, you gotta, you know, pay for all that when you, when you move out to the woods. But we did get several days out in the real wilderness and we thought like, it's, it's just so cinematic, so great. I learned a lot from doing the angel episode, um, Smile Time. Like I when know. you put puppets on, on camera with like really professional lenses and make it look cinematic and beautiful. It's like, it's a whole different puppet experience. So that's really what we tried to do. Um, and they, they built to save money. They built an entire forest on a soundstage for us. So most of the time you see all the characters waltzing through a forest. Most of that is indoors with some spectacular lighting and, uh, and they spent, they spent like, a month hammering together trees from parts of other trees. They hmm. literally built a forest. It was amazing to watch. Um, but yeah, I, you know, Mike and I were involved in so much and, and all the production, like character design and, and casting and, and picking. I mean, they had casting directors, but you know, we suggested the puppeteers we liked. And that whole series was done with eight puppeteers. That's it. That's all we got. Eight people. Oh, wow. I waltzed them onto on the set and I said, you see this land of Gothmoria? You're it. You are every living, breathing thing in the entire kingdom. So <laughs> <laughs> buckle up. It's going to be insane. And this was the height of COVID. So a lot of times we were masked up when we weren't performing. And uh, I still have the giant laminated COVID testing area sign with uh, with the barbarian, actually, it was Brendar the barbarian at that time. It was named. Um, they renamed it later, which we fought. But they're, they're like, you got to put your troll character in the title. I'm like, I, I, I don't. He doesn't need to be there. <laughs> so anyway, but it was super fun, and I gotta say, hats off to Nickelodeon. They yes. made a fantastic. I I think they caused to be made through me and Mike, of course, and all the very talented craftspeople and performers working on it. Uh, I'm really proud of that show. I think it's I think it's awesome. I hope everybody checks it out. It's available, I think, on iTunes and Amazon Plus. I think it's only 20 bucks for the season. Um, but it's, yeah, it's it's really fun. And I got to play a lot of fun, fun characters on it. I Absolutely. Played, uh, I played the, the ghost man uh johnny connoisseur and i played the dragon um and yeah it's uh, it's, uh and evan yes definitely yes. absolutely so uh can you share any projects you're currently working on what am i working on currently what well, you're allowed to talk about of yeah course, i don't yeah, right? i don't know <laughs> i don't know how much i'm allowed to talk about um i am doing off and on uh my friend tom stern who directed for crank anchors is doing a documentary on 80s punk band the butthole surfers <laughs> i think it's called something like the whole truth anyway um but uh but it's gonna be really cool and i'm doing he's doing puppet reenactments of some of their their best bits so i don't i don't think he'll be mad at me about uh for talking about that i think he wants it um, popularized because it's going to be it's going to be really cool and really fun nice um, and it's yeah and he interviews a ton of the, the band members and if you're at all interested in an 80s uh 80s punk and nice. 90s they're actually big in the 90s maybe bigger well, so, nice. yeah so i'm working on, off and on on that yeah it's yes fun. yeah um, so oh go ahead and then i'm just and then i'm just you know pitching my own stuff here and there and then and I got so, yeah I got some stuff I'm working on that I can't talk about. Okay so uh, to wrap this up so this pot this podcast is called Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. <clears throat> when you think of nostalgia what do you think of or in your own words how would you define the word nostalgia? My happy place? I don't know I just uh, nostalgia is a, a big a big part of my life. Cause I, 
even now, I grew up on radio. So even now I listen avidly to CBS media, uh, the incredible adventures of Jack Flanders. If you've never seen him, go to zbsmedia.org uh, or zbs.org. I don't know. They're great. And then uh, the original form of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is the radio show, can't beat it. It's phenomenal. I listen to that stuff constantly while I'm thinking and drawing and writing and, um, and even going to sleep. Like, it fuels me. That is, that is nostalgia for me. Oh, and uh, my, my buddy John just put up on the Plex server uh, the Star Wars NPR show. So that's also lots of nostalgia. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Great words, not done. But uh, Drew, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview. This was a blast. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank so you very really much, Drew, for I being on. Uh, and, uh, I hope I've satisfied your nostalgia craving for... Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and thank <laughs> yes, you so you much, did. Drew, for, for being on. For you know, Thank you so much for what you've done, your, for your work, be a part of our lives, and you know, keep up with great work what you're doing now. I cannot wait what's next in store for you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I, I'm I'm curious to see what 2024 brings. It's gonna be yes, fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Us too. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm enjoy the rest of your you. day, Drew. Keep in touch, and I'll let you know when this goes up. All right. Thanks so much, Chris. All right. Thank you. See you guys. See you, Drew. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your Drew. day. Thanks you too. Bye. 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 It's goodbye from us as well, everybody. We absolutely enjoyed our time speaking with Drew Massey. Um, keep on the lookout for uh, more wonderful interviews coming your way. Um, and as always, take us home, Jake. What do we say? Keep nostalgia alive. Take care, everyone. See you next time. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.